Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL Week 8 preview between the Carolina Panthers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Panthers. What an offensive turnaround the Panthers have had the last couple of weeks, and it's because of the fact they're playing mistake-free football. They have to keep that up this week versus Tampa. And versus the Bucks this week, I look for tight end Greg Olson having to win over the middle and Brandon LaFell to have to win down the seams because I believe that's where there's openings in this Bucks defense. And if the Panthers are going to be successful offensively, those two guys have to win those battles. Defensively, the Panthers have one of the best defenses in the league, and that front seven is pretty solid, and even playing without DeWan Edwards, the two rookies up front, Starlo Talele and also Kawan Short, have done a great job in the middle. And I look for more man-free, two-man, cover four, versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in an attempt to put more pressure on Mike Glennon in the pocket as those receivers work to get open versus those tight press coverages. Now let's move over to Tampa Bay in this ball game and self-inflicted wounds are killing the Bucks offensively. This is a team, in my opinion, that can move the football, but they have to be able to sustain drives and not shoot themselves in the foot like they did last week versus Atlanta. Now versus Carolina, the misdirection game versus this Panthers defensive line will be key. That's your counters, your traps, your draw plays. Anything to influence that defensive line will calm the rush down and help your offense be that much more effective. Defensively, contained defense is the key versus Carolina. Now, if the Bucs are able to contain Cam Newton in the pocket, it then makes the matchup the Bucs secondary versus the Panthers receiving core. And despite the numbers, personnel-wise, you have to like that matchup defensively. In order for the Carolina Panthers to have success this week versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're going to have to create big plays with their personnel. And I'm a big fan of utilizing two backs in the backfield at the same time to get desired results. And I'm going to show you how they can hit a big play in the passing game versus this Bucks defense. Now, a lot of times the Bucks will go either cover two, they may go cover three. And this right here that I'm about to draw up is a big play that you can have versus cover one or versus cover three. So I'm going to show you right here. We're going to have Kenyon Barner lined up in the slot as long as well as uh, D'Angelo Williams. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to fake the zone read. That's going to hold these backers and strong safety that's in the hole. They're going to have to respect the run and we're going to try to get Kenyon Barner deep down the field. But giving Cam Newton plenty of reads at different levels and we're going to also put the free safety in the bind. We're going to give him a two on one read. So what we're going to do here, bring D'Angelo Williams in motion, snap the ball, fake the, the zone read. He's your hot read because he's your flat defender right here. Now what we're going to do, bring Steve Smith across the formation underneath the linebackers as your second read. So you have two built-in hot reads that you can get rid of football quickly if they send extra or if one of your offensive linemen get beat up front by one of the defensive linemen so you can get the football out of your hands quickly. Next, we're going to have the backside post. This is key because what, what this is going to do is get the eyes of the free safety going here, or if the strong safety is gonna wall underneath, or if he's gonna worry about this, but it puts the strong safety in the bind, and it also puts the free safety in the bind, and the corner obviously has this guy one-on-one. -on -one. But we're also gonna look at the fact that now you have the tight end, his job is to make sure he gets this free safety occupied, keep this free safety occupied as well. We're gonna work him up, and we're gonna bring him across. Now versus zone, he finds the soft spot settled down, Versus man, you run straight across, but this free safety is either going to jump this route or get over top of this route. And this is where big play is going to happen. We're sitting in Kenyon Barner right down the seam. One-on-one -on -one match with a linebacker should be an easy battle for him to win. And you can get the football to him, put it out in front. This free safety has a choice. He essentially has three-on-one. Either he's going to squeeze down on this in route, get over top of this streak right here, going down the seam with Kenyon Barner, or get over top of this post on the backside. So either way, the safety is going to have to make a bad choice, and it's up to Cam Newton right now. And he's playing out of his mind to make a quick decision, get rid of the football, and hopefully a big play can happen. But you can see where utilizing your personnel can yield a big play. Why? Because, again, we didn't put a receiver here. We put a running back here that can catch the football. So that way, this is not a nickel defender. This is a running back on a linebacker, and that's an easy battle. The Panthers can win this week. I believe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can have success versus the Carolina Panthers running the football. When the Panthers go into their over front, I think they can run weak side with their ISO and their lead. And those are the two plays I'm going to draw up versus this over front. The reason why I love weak side running is the fact that you have the numbers advantage for an offense. It allows you to get man on man blocking. You got one, two, three defenders weak side. You got one, 
two, three, four potential blockers with him being the fifth guy or one, two, three, and he's being the fourth guy. So you have the numbers advantage weak side by formation. And here's the ISO play we're gonna do. We're gonna isolate the fullback on the linebacker. So that's his guy right here leading up here. And we're gonna black strong side. Tight end kicks out the defensive end. We're gonna combo block this defensive tackle with the guard working up to get this backer blocked so that way he doesn't scrape over and make the play. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a fold block here, which means we're gonna have this guard watch this nose tackle and we're gonna fold the center back around, getting him on the second level. And that's key, because you wanna get your lineman on the second level as quickly as possible. Pull the center around, have him block that middle linebacker. Boom. You have Glennon open out, Mike James or Doug Dark Martin is gonna be out. So you got Mike James in the backfield, getting the football and hopefully running to daylight or making a play on one of these linebackers or safeties. You have the tackle blocking out your defensive end. Now, this is the ISO. Let me show you the lead play. We're gonna get two linemen at the second level and that's key two linemen at the second level right off the snap is going to be huge that's a win for the offense because you have your linemen on linebackers same rules apply front side so we're not going to change that now once again boom kick down fold the center around to get the middle backer this time instead of having a tackle kick out the defensive end we're going to have just him go up and take out the linebacker. So you have the center on the second level, you have the tackle on the second level, and you have your fullback kicking out the defensive end, and you have Mike James, again, running to daylight. So that's how I feel as though they can run the football versus the Panthers over front. If they run weak side, I think they have success this time around versus Carolina. The X factor in this ball game will be that Panthers defensive line. This is a battle that they're gonna have to win throughout this matchup. If they can get pressure, not only on Mike Glennon, but if they can disrupt the running game, it goes a long way in helping these guys win versus Tampa Bay. The X factor for the Bucks will be their third down defense. This is a very talented Bucks defense. I really like what they're doing, especially in the front seven. Now last week versus Atlanta, they were able to get those guys off the field. Now their offense, Tampa Bay's offense I'm talking about, is a young, struggling offense trying to find their way. But like I said before, they can move the football. It's all about giving these guys more opportunities. And if they can get off the field like they did last week and give that young offense more reps to get it going, then they can find themselves victorious versus Carolina. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For Carolina, you wanna find those early wins on defense, get the Bucks offense off the field, it'll deflate their confidence. And also the openers are key. That's starting the game and coming out of halftime, you have to win on those opening drives in order to be successful. And the offensive line has to win those battles throughout the course of the game, recognizing stunts, the pressures, the blitz, the running game. You have to be able to win up front versus a talented front seven in Tampa Bay. Now for Tampa Bay in this ball game, the big matchup everyone will be watching and key to the passing game will be Darrell Revis matched up versus Steve Smith. That's a battle Revis will have to win. And you want to box in the running game, play inside out, force everything tackle to tackle, and you can be successful defensively. And you want to work the perimeter on offense, put those outside linebackers and strong safety to work both in the running game as well as in the passing game, and you can find yourself having success versus this Panthers defense. I like Carolina in this ball game. I think both defenses will show up and slow down each other's offense, but I do believe Carolina does have the offensive weapons in the running game as well as in the passing game to make big plays when they need them. So I like the Panthers to go on the road and knock off the Bucks. And I, and I also want to give a huge shout out to Carolina fan forums and Buccaneer fan forums for always showing football game plan support.